Okay, I made this video because understanding the relationship between base curve and diameter is crucial to fitting contact lenses. And while it's not highly complex, um, it is something that warrants its own time and space to learn to understand it. The base curve of a contact lens is the radius of curvature of the lens. The diameter is how wide the lens is. Now, it's the relationship between the diameter and the base curve that tightens or loosens the fit of the contact lenses. Tightening or loosening, what does that even mean? Well, let me show you. This contact lens is too flat for this eye, and you can see that because it's a greatly exaggerated picture. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to steepen and tighten the lens until it's just right and then until it's over tight. And you can just see what that looks like on an eye. And if you look over there in the right upper right corner, I have the same lens and you can, if you can't see it on the eye, you can watch how it changes shape. Okay, I think that picture just pretty well summarized what is meant by too steep or too flat, or too tight, or too loose. A lens that's too steep or too flat can actually change the virgin's power of the lens by forming a tear film lens, if you will, between the contact and the cornea. Not so much with soft lenses because of their flexibility, but with the rigid lenses, the tear film can form a, a little concave or convex shape and, and affect the converging power. There are three ways that you can tighten or loosen contact lenses using the base curve and the diameter. Okay, you can keep the base curve constant and change the diameter. You can keep the diameter constant and change the base curve, or you can do a little bit of both. To get a clear understanding of what the base curve and the diameter are of a contact lens, you need to think of the base curve in terms of a sphere and the diameter in terms of a circle. The base curve is the radius of a sphere and the diameter is the diameter of a circle. So if you had a sphere made out of your contact lens material and hollow in the center, and you found the very center in there, in the hollow part, and drew a line from there out to the edge of your, your contact lens material sphere. It would be halfway through, and that would be the radius. Now, the diameter is not the diameter of that sphere. The diameter is when you've already cut the contact lens off of that sphere at some point, and, um, it doesn't go over the top of the lens. It's not the diameter of a, a curve either. It goes from the bottom of the lens or the edge of the lens from one side to the other through the center. And one more measurement to introduce here is the sagittal depth of the contact lens or the vault. If you were to lay the contact lens down on a flat surface, uh, down on the table, let's say, and you were to go from the very center of the lens, the apex, and draw a line from there down to the table, straight down, that would be called the vault. Okay, now don't confuse vault and base curve. The vault would run along the radius of the sphere or the base curve, but the vault would end where the contact lens was sliced off of the sphere, whereas the base curve would go all the way to the center of the sphere. Okay, so we can tighten or loosen the contact lens by changing the base curve and keeping the diameter constant. These are three different spheres with three different size radii. With the smaller sphere, of course, would have the shorter radius. And each one of these um, numbers that you see under the sphere 
represents the length of the radius of the sphere, but that's also how the base curve is expressed on the contact lens itself. So the base curve would say maybe 8.6. What that 8.6 means is if that contact lens were an entire sphere, the radius of the sphere would be 8.6 millimeters. Now imagine if we were to cut a contact lens off of each of these spheres, and each of our contact lenses was 14 millimeters in diameter. What would that look like? So it's evident from this picture that the contact lens with the smaller base curve would have a steeper curvature, would have a deeper vault, and would fit tighter. And as you get progressively larger radii, once you get to the nine, you have a shallower vault and not quite as tight a contact lens, not quite as steep a fit. K readings measure the diopteric power of the cornea, um, the diopteric power that the radius of curvature produces. If that doesn't make sense, you can watch the radius of curvature video and how the diopteric power and radius are related. So you get a K reading and that corresponds to a radius. Uh, with gas permeables, sometimes you're gonna work with the radius. Sometimes they're ordered using a diopteric power rather than a radius. So I'm gonna show you what that might look like. So the measurements for gas permeable lenses would look something more like this. And notice the diameters are much smaller. And the base curve, well, think of the K readings. Um, they're made to match the curvature of the cornea, more or less. Um, if, you, if you take the flattest of the two K readings and you match that, let's say it's 43.5, that's the flattest of the, your 2K readings, and you're gonna fit, it's called fitting on K, then you're gonna select the lens in the center with a base curve of 43.5. It'll match the cornea. Now that's not always how it's fit, but that's, that's called fitting on K. Okay, one more quick note about base curve before we move on. With contact lenses, the base curve is measured on the back of the lens, which is the opposite of eyeglass lenses. With eyeglass lenses, remember the base curve is the front curvature of the lens and the power curve is the back curve. With contact lenses, the base curve is the back curve. The moral of that story, increasing the base curve flattens the lens. Okay, what if we were to keep the base curve constant and change the diameter? If we were cutting a lens from a sphere, the largest diameter lens that we could cut would be right through the center of the sphere, right? And as we cut lenses farther and farther away from that center, the diameters would get smaller and smaller. Now think about this, what is the base curve for each of these lenses? It's the same. The base curve is the radius of the sphere that it was cut from. And since each of these is cut from the same size sphere, the base curve is gonna be the same. The radius is gonna be the same. So, as the diameter increases, the sagittal depth, or vault, also increases, steepening the lens. So increasing the diameter steepens the lens. Increasing the base curve flattens the lens. And with both, which was our third option, with both, we can just do a little of each. Okay, so what this whole video is saying, the base curve and diameter together determine the sagittal depth or vault of the contact lens, which determines its fit. 
Now, if you don't want to alter the fit and you change one, you usually need to adjust the other to compensate. And why would that happen? Well, with the guest, with the guest permeable lenses, you have you can make more precise lenses because they're they're customized. Whereas with most um, soft lenses, they come in certain parameters. The manufacturer determines what diameter they come in. There's some lenses that only come in one diameter. Um, and, and it's the same way with the base curves. There are just certain ones. It's like, it's like shoes. If you're a perfect seven and three quarters, well, you got to make a choice between seven and a half and eight. It's because that's what they come in. Um, same thing here. So if you find, let's say you find the perfect soft lens for the patient because the patient um, has chronic dry eyes and they need something with a little more moisture and water content um, and they only come in one diameter, you might have to alter the base curve to compensate. Okay, for soft contact lenses, um, they would be fit generally by selecting the specific lens, the brand of lens, um, based on patient information, which would be something like, um, how long do you intend to wear them during the day? Are you going to put them in for a couple hours? Um, are you going to wear them all day? Are you going to sleep in them? Are you going to wear them for a week? And do you have dry eyes? Do you work on a computer all day? Are you using your eyes a lot during the day, you know, reading, computer work? Um, so select a specific brand that tailors best to the patient and then choose a base curve that's about four diopters flatter than their flattest K reading. Um, with the guest permeable lenses, there's a lot, a lot of different theories and different ways to do it. So I'm just going to give you an example. This is just an example. Um, you can fit flat on the K reading, which means the flattest K um, you're going to match the, the um, reading. Some will be a half a diopter flatter, some a half a diopter steeper. For example, um, some follow these rules. If the eye is spherical, they'll go a half a diopter flatter than the flattest K. If the eye has up to um, 0.75 diopters of cylinder, they'll fit on the K. And then from 0.75 diopters to, to two diopters of cylinder, they'll go a half a diopter steeper than the K. Um, some split the difference between the Ks. So it's just a guideline, just to give you an example. And honestly, you can do calculations all you want. That's just a starting point. The best determinant of fit is patient preference and just putting the lenses on and taking a look as they blink how they slide around. And that's a whole nother video um, to determine whether they're too tight or too loose. I just want to stick to one thing at a time. But um, this is just a starting off point. Now, I know you're wondering, I know someone was wondering, I, I was wondering, if you change the curvature, isn't it going to change the acuities? And here's a picture that I have resurrected from the radius of curvature video I did. And this has been in probably four other videos by now, because this is really what ophthalmic optics is all about. And it is going to change it a little bit. Um, not for the soft contact lenses, really, because the way that they're, they're ground and the flexibility of them and the fact that they mold to the eye better. But for the rigid contact lenses, the gas permeables and the hardbs, um, it is going to change and you do have to compensate for that. There's a rule, it's called the SAM FAP rule, which is a mnemonic. Um, what it means is if you're fitting steeper than the, the K reading, act, add the same amount of minus to the RX. And if you're fitting flatter, you add the same amount of plus. Okay, so SAM FAP stands for steeper, add, minus, flatter add plus. And of course you can memorize the mnemonic, but if you forget it, just sit and think about it for a second. It makes complete sense because if you're steepening the curvature of the lens, you're adding more convergence or plus power. So to compensate, you're going to have to compensate with minus power. 
to neutralize that.